Hello to viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're going to talk about in-pipe energy. So let's dive deep into it. So what we are talking about here is basically hydropower, exactly like a water dam. Now you have to understand one core aspect, water if it's moving from point A to point B, that puppy has power and be very mindful, it does not mean it has to be a river or a waterfall or a canal, something like that. It can have the same amount of power if it's flowing inside a pipe. And yes, this is a water going boom. So it's one of those things you have to understand. Water has a lot of oomph. If you can extract it, that's a lot of energy you can get out of it. And we have to use pressure reducer in many parts of our day-to-day -day life. Basically, your municipality waters, your county water supply system, your country's water management system, your industries. We have to use pressure reducer because if we like literally directly send the pressure that we are receiving yeah this is gonna happen and that's a gentle one but most likely this will happen so you have to understand that water has insane amount of energy that we are wasting by pressure reduction like think about a turbine what does it inherently do it takes gg amounts of pressure it drops it to almost zero or ambient so to say so that's what we want to do if we are if we have to reduce pressure so this does not happen in everyone's home uh, we are doing it that's a common thing okay awesome but what if we extracted energy in order to do that rather than just like okay we are wasting the energy water gets heat up little bit and like you know this and that like very lame things we do what if we extracted energy and that caused the pressure drop that would be awesome so this is the hydropower side of things. So there are two modes of operation. First mode is generation. Now, if you are lucky enough, meaning you are around, uh, basically you are in a city or municipality, whatever have you, and you have what we call downhill flow for you. Basically your water is uphill from your point of view, from your vantage point of view, then you can get energy out of it for free. At that point in time, like for example, whenever uh, countries, nations, they build dam, they design in such a way that water naturally flows to where it is needed. So they do not want to waste energy on pumping. So most places ends up with getting this. Basically, you have huge pipes directly connecting the reservoir and to city uh, centers and all that, basically city water distribution system. So these pipes have insane amount of pressure. And you are, all you are doing is basically taking this control C, control V into a tube. That's all you are doing. Instead of having this, of course, you will not get the same amount of power from this. Like this would be, let's say two or three gigawatt. You will be lucky to get hundreds of kilowatts or maybe two, three megawatt, but do not expect the same level of power. That's That being said, wasting that power versus actually using that power, I would go with using that power. So this would be classified as generation. You are not paying for it. It's generation of power. Now benefit of that is it's cheap because you are just putting everything in the pipe which is already there. Like uh, I have linked the video down below. This is a physically real thing in real use. So it's cheap and it has no ecological damage. Whenever you say dam, people who know dams, they do not like it. Why don't they like it? Well, this is the guaranteed way of killing a river and the ecology. Ecology dies first and then the river slowly evaporates. Like, wait a minute. Many people used to think that we're going to build a dam that's going to save water from evaporation. No, we just increase the surface area exponentially and sun is making some extra love. Ask China. China went a bit uh, too much weed on it and they put almost one uh, dam every 100 kilo, uh, kilometers. Basically, they poofed rivers that have never been dried for thousands of years in their own history books like for thousands of years the rivers have never been dried and they built a dam then they built some more dam and then they built some more dam and poof river gone so we do not want to build dam unless absolutely necessary and if you are wise never like we have learned the hard way that this things looks good but long term hey water level is supposed to be here here it's only a matter of decades before even this goes poof that's just a mathematics. We forgot about the part that water evaporates if you expose into large surface area. So that's a bad thing. But if you already have it, building the system like energy recovery system or energy generation system, does it cause the same effect? No. So it's like, eh, we already have it, might as well use it. And be mindful, not every place using uh, water is getting from reservoir. Many of them are getting some lakes that are situated on top and is being recharged by rainwater. So, in those sort of scenario, no ecological damage, that's good, it's cheap, that's awesome, it's 24 into 7 into 365, that's the main benefit here. Even if somebody comes to you and it's like, hey, I can sell you 50 kilowatts of energy, you may be like, eh, that's not that much, that's like one basic school solar rooftop. The moment he says 50 kilowatt, 24 into 7 into 365, you're like, shut up, take money. 
shut up, take money. That's the hit. That's it. Shut up, take money. And that amount of energy is significant enough for people who are dealing with water. It could be enough to offset their energy use for water transportation, water treatment and all that jazz. Of course, it will not eliminate it completely, but it will reduce it enough where it's like, huh, doing this, investing in this puppy, getting the energy out, using that energy to drive all the water related system, auxiliary systems, we are reducing our energy bill. Good. This is the generation part. Now, second part is recovery. Now, recovery is if pressure is man-made. In those scenarios, sun is your battery guy. Sun is charging up the seas. Sea is like, I, I, I don't like this. It boils away. It goes to the, basically, mountain tops. It dumps down there. Then it flows into the river. Sun is your recharging guy. Here, we are the recharging guy. We are plugging in the pumps. We are pressurizing it. Now, that that's good. That's awesome. That does work. But however, most of the time, not even most, like almost all of the time, we always create more pressure. It's like if we need 50 PSI going to the household, we may be creating 250 PSI at source. So by the time it goes through all the supply manifolds, we have so many pressure reduction stages. That's like, really? I, even I was unaware of it, like the amount of pressure reduction we do. And even in uh, factories, industry, you could literally have a giant water tower going YOLO on it and you are charging up everything and then you're like, wait a minute. You just increase the pressure and all you are doing now is pressure reduction on it everywhere. I was shocked. Like it was new to me. It's like, wait, we have that much pressure reduction on water flow. Yes, we do. So in those sort of scenario, like municipalities, uh, municipality scale, a large uh, district to district water transportation, state level uh, water transportation or enterprise or this uh, like, you know, you can even do in a large building who has like for some reason is using too much water for some reason uh, in those sort of scenario doing this sort of water recovery system basically pressure recovery valve system uh, you can get enough energy out of it that it actually reduces your running cost and that's just like shut up take money and now be mindful at this point in time we are not talking about energy generation sun is not charging you what you are being charged for is basically instead of consuming 100 units of electricity you are consuming 50 units of electricity so this will be classified as recovery it's almost like how we have kinetic energy recovery system in f1 it does not make energy it just recovers it when you apply brakes it's like hey instead of heating the brake pads what if we collect that energy same thing here instead of just wasting that energy through pressure reduction what if we this is the pressure reduction valve what if it's like heat it then send it to a turbine turbine drops the pressure and then we use it now if it goes for faulty we close this part up this normal pressure system works and then we maintain it everybody wins so it's very awesome tool for lowering utility bill it can also be done for buildings that are ludicrously tall as in like if you are taller than 20 story buildings you can do some serious energy recovery like serious as in how serious if your water uh, pumping cost to the top of the building could be let's say one megawatt of unit uh, you can literally half it so it's a serious thing so energy recovery even though it's a recovery it's still a valuable tool for every places and companies who have invested in the, their roi on like this equipment is surprisingly quick so it's one of those things that it's just a, somebody had a lightable moment it's like hey what if we did this rather than just whoosh, wasting the energy and it's like, huh, it actually makes sense. So what are the tools? What are the tool set that we have? Well, there are a few small companies that have jumped into this uh, mix. It's a completely new market. And the oldest company I found is like 2007. Uh, and so a lot of company have jumped into it. And uh, if you have ludicrously large tube like this puppy, this is a huge turbine unit. Uh, it has like a lot of power, uh, lucid energy one. It has such a big pipe volume that it needs in the tube turbine. Basically, the turbine is inside the tube. Now, this turbine looks like an air turbine. It is air turbine. It literally has the what we call lift uh, design. So lift based in pipe turbine. Now, of course, it has to be made out of the strongest aluminum alloy that they can have. Aluminum, so it does not corrode. Aluminum, so it has strength because again, water flow is far more, how shall I put this, oomphish compared to air. So it does need to be lower, strong and rigid. Benefit, it does work. It's a known system. People have deployed it, actually get energy out of it. And ROI has already been done in some systems. Or other systems is like, yeah, it's a matter of time. Like we have been operating this puppy for seven years. It's like, yeah, it took 10 years to uh, do ROI and we have enough data for seven years like yeah it's gonna happen it's just a matter of time so uh, there are one company is that in pipe energy that puppy started in 2016 now this is their portfolio you can see like they have uh, options of uh, up to 10 kilowatt up to 50 kilowatt uh, 200 kilowatt 350 kilowatts 600 kilowatt 1 megawatt and 2 megawatt and this is their flow requirement basically uh, water flow 1 liter per second to 10 liters per second 100 liters per second 1000 liter per second 10k liter per second 
and this is the uh, head pressure basically how much they need uh, so generally they are assuming that if you are in a situation where you actually have ludicrously high head pressure you're not talking about something serious it does kind of make sense it's like where else you're gonna have head pressure of like 450 meters does not make sense so but here's the deal in uh, scenarios where people engineers design the water diversion towers those can easily give you uh, basically from mountain top to all that that can easily give you 100 meters at that point if you have enough flow you can get up to few megawatts out of it so that is in pipe energy is, this portfolio is directly from them 2016 usa lucid energy have been bought and sold to some other brand so this name directly will not show up any search result but you can google it quickly uh, this was the first company that i've saw uh, that actually did this so these are the tools that we are using now this uh, sort of innovation kind of makes me very happy because it shows a good mindset now you have to be uh, very clear about that this is not going to solve our problem yes in practical in practice we can achieve a point where we are making terawatts of power that's factually true but you also have to understand just water itself consumes almost four percent of global energy four freaking percent of global energy now at best case scenario what we can do instead of four while increasing the numbers of people that we are serving, we can reduce it by half. That's the ideal case scenario. Unless most of the places people are running on like gravity fed system. Yeah, in those scenarios, I could easily see getting even more energy out of it, but that's the ideal case, half. Now, if we can do that, that's tangible enough where it's like worth doing. It's one of those things that is worth doing. So I'm really happy that people are actually investing. Like this is for a building. So I'm happy that people are, hey, what if just a little bit of energy recovery from here? What if it can be done with ROI in mind, if it has enough ROI, good enough. How about reducing energy load on buildings rather than just like, oh, we have to work on fusion and all that, which has been, I, I'm old, I'm getting fed up with fusion. So I really like this idea. And every little bit that we move towards this sort of system where you have this little bit of power, this little bit of energy recovery that helps us reach what we call energy independence. I want my nation to be energy independent. That requires every vector to be taken care of. It cannot be just like, oh, we have fusion. This will solve all our problems. 99% of the time, it will not solve any problem. So we have to tackle it every way. Why? Because we messed up the earth in multiple ways. So we have to take care of it in multiple ways. So this sort of tool, it shows that it's not glamorous. It's not a big thing. It's all that jazz but somebody is doing it enough people are looking into it enough people are investing into it they're like hey it's a little thing but little thing is better than doing nothing and i'm very happy about this and here's the everything is better than waste so how much energy you are recovering here zero uh how much how about 10 kilowatt how uh, now you may be like hey our bill is like one megawatt here still that's awesome that's not a problem how about compare that to zero zero versus 10 kilowatts you may be like hey, that's a chump change hey it will have roi as in, it, like this puppy, you can, if you, it looks like a freaking normal water pump, because it is, somebody figured out uh, back in early days, as in like, we could just use normal water pump running in reverse. It does work, but then we are like, hey, we are actually getting some energy out of it. It actually makes sense. What if we replace this part and put a dedicated turbine that is designed to extract energy rather than just like, eh, pump running in reverse to like, okay, what you need to have to have proper pressure drop, proper thing like basically fine-tuned it then they're like hey we're getting more energy getting exact same pressure drop getting more energy out it's like how is it violating the laws of physics no it's just more efficient it's like going from incandescent to uh, cfl light bulb so it it's one of those things that more and more industries more and more buildings more and more municipality they are learning that this is a little thing but it has enough importance where it's like ah, doing it reduces our bill so might as well do it i'm happy about that so ROI and be mindful these things are time tested if you ask anyone it's like how long a three-phase induction motor can last they're like dude it will last forever heck if you have a three-phase synchronous motor that is brushless yeah forever it will last forever because it has power factor of one so I'm really happy with this sort of thing it, it makes me glad that some people are rather than just going for shiny new things like hey what if we take care of this little thing if we, if we have thousands of people taking care of little, 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 one day we'll wake up, it's like, oh, problem solved. So this was my presentation on basically in-pipe energy system. Hopefully you guys have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please hit the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.